Good morning, Living Room family. This is quite strange doing it this way once again. You know, I'm finding it quite weird sitting or standing in my house preaching. So may God give, us, give me the grace for this and give you the grace to listen. So God bless you guys. Um, you know what? It is what it is. We're embracing this season for everything that God can do with it. And it really does feel like that little boy who brought to Jesus a few fish and loaves of bread and watch what Jesus did. So that's the faith we have, that even in this limited capacity, Jesus can do something beautiful. So Lord God, in your name I pray, do something great today with this word, Lord God, because I believe it's coming from your heart to ours. Lord Jesus, help us be with us in a very real, definite, clear way today. In your name I pray, for your glory, God. Amen. Well, this does look a little bit different for the past quite a few weeks. We've been recording our weekly messages and, and sermons um, and services in our Melton location, but due to stage four restrictions, we're unable to do that now. So we are stuck in our home here in Torquay and um, I'm very grateful for this technology and for Matt Coomer for helping me out set this up because it's been another massive learning curve, learning new software and all this hardware and oh my goodness. Jesus never had these issues, okay? When he preached outside, all he had to be concerned with was how his voice would bounce off the rocks around him. So, But look, the truth is, guys, that Kaz and I have really been praying for you during this season or this new second wave of lockdowns because it's not easy for you. We understand that. We understand that a lot of you are concerned about your jobs, the future of your jobs, even concerned about the, the future of the church and what that's going to look like for you and your family. But what I do find comfort in all of this is that we're not alone. We have God every step of the way. He will never leave us. He will never abandon us in this time and he never will in any other time. But I also want you to remember you have your church family around you as well. They're a phone call away. Call people. Nurture each other. Encourage each other. Build each other up in this, in this season. But I am really excited to be with you today from our living room to yours as we gather in so many different locations around our nation and beyond. You know, it's funny, it is quite funny that our new name, The Living Room, is taking on a whole new meaning this year, isn't it? And I'm, and I'm so grateful for that because it really is expressing the heart behind who we are, that the, our church is not bound and contained to a building. Our church, both in Melton and in Torquay, is equally as active as it was when we we're actually in our buildings. Just because you're in your home on this day, this Sunday, doesn't mean that God is not there with you. The church is alive, the church is active in this season, no matter where, no matter what it looks like. You are the church. You are not alone. And God is doing something beautiful in this season in your church, in your church, in your home. And just a quick thing I'd like to mention about that. Parents, please hear my heart on this. You are pastors of your own family now. This is how God always intended it to be. You are pastors of your own family. You have the responsibility of leading them through this season. We're all doing this week by week for you online. But the purpose of what I'm doing even in this moment is to add fuel, to empower, to encourage, to equip you to lead your family in the ways of Christ. Please do not miss this. Don't miss this wonderful opportunity that we all have. God is not wasting this. And neither should we. Okay, so I've got that off my chest. But I've got, I do have a message today for you that is an expression of that same heart. And it's going to be very practical today. You'll notice a few things that I have here with me. And I'll explain those a little bit later on. But I want us thinking on, on something here. Many of us, all of us, face situations that are not welcomed nor wanted. But such moments many of them out of our control. Such moments, I believe, are filled with such great potential for God to come through and for God to take you further than you ever could in any other moment. The stories 
that we read, the stories even that we hear as we pass the people through their journeys of life. It would shock you at some of the things. I remember when I first started out as a pastor all those years ago now and hearing for the first time someone's horrific story of abuse or, or breakdown or whatever it is and I'm, and I'm listening to it and I'm thinking, I only ever saw this in movies. I didn't even realise this happened in real life. But there it was right in front of me. And over the years, we've heard many things and and our hearts go out to every single one of you who are going through challenging seasons. But while we don't want to ignore what you're going through and how, how confronting it can be for you, we always live with the conviction that Jesus is your answer. Your God is your strength, your shield, your strong tower. So we will always point you to him. And that's what today's message is also about. I will never point you to me or point you to Kaz. We will always point you to him, your strength. And it's so wonderful that as Christians, when we live the life of faith, our whole reality changes. Our whole way of life changes. I want to make a declaration straight up with you, a declaration. Let's make this thing together. Here we go on the screen. I never have to live under the circumstances ever again. Oh, that just feels so good to say. I never have to live under the circumstances ever again. You see, God, through his Holy Spirit dwelling in you, has already empowered you to live above the circumstances. How good is that? If someone ever asks you the question, hey, how are you going under these circumstances? Say, sorry, <laughs> I don't live under the circumstances. I live above them. Amen. And I'll admit, yes, there are times when this doesn't happen as quickly as you'd like them to. And, and sometimes that's mostly due to the, to the thing between our ears, our mind, that needs to catch up with this truth quite often. But these seasons of challenge and difficulty will only last as long as you allow them to. What do I mean by that? But what I mean is that the externals around you are not your reality. It might be the the fact of what's going on, but there's a greater truth in all of this. And that's what I'd like to point you to today. It's been amazing over the many centuries of people walking with Jesus, the lives that they've actually lived. But not only in this new covenant relationship we have with him, but also even in the Old Testament. The things that people had to face, the persecution, even in the face of death, these people of God were able to stand strong in his name and be elevated above it. A most inspiring example to me is, of course, the king, the king of Israel, King David. He had a remarkable ability to live from the place that was grounded in his heart-to-heart connection with God. It's been said of King David that he, unlike anyone else in the Old Testament, had a new covenant experience. You see, what was rare in David's time is actually normal for you and I now. It's amazing, even greater than that. But I want to take you to 1 Samuel and show you a moment in David's life and in the life of his men that was absolutely gut-wrenching and devastating. Here it is on the screen that we can read it together. 1 Samuel chapter 30 from verses 1 through to 6. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ainoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. I don't care how you put it, that is a bad day right there. A horrific day. Not only 
was did David and his men come to their village and realize it had been burned, it had been looted. But not only that, but their wives and their children had been kidnapped, taken captive by the enemy. And then to top it all off, David's men who had fought with him in battle were now turning against him, ready to stone him to death. Why? Because the leader is always the obvious target. So in the middle of this extreme grief, in the middle of this danger on David's life, it says this in verse 6. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. What a powerful verse. Very short verse, but extremely life-changing. Look at this. David was only able to find God's strength because he created a lifestyle of living in it. I love, I get the picture that all these things are going wrong around David and and he's trying to come to terms with his own grief and his own pain and his quick response is, I need to go be with God. I need to go into God's presence. I need to find my peace, find my hope, find my strength in God. Why? Because he's done it for me before. This is familiar to me. I know what it looks like. I know what it does to me. I know where to go. David only did that because he already had a history with God of finding strength in his presence. David knew where to go to have peace. David knew where to go to get his heart aligned to what God was doing. He knew where to go when his tank was empty. David knew where to go when the mystery surrounded him and he didn't have answers to all the questions. David knew where to go when the enemy attacked him, when the battle seemed lost, when the pressure felt like it was going to crush him and when, and when the victory seemed absent. He found strength in the presence of God because he knew from experience, from history, what that place did for him. Please hear me now. This verse tells us that he found strength before the situation changed. Don't miss that. David found his strength before the situation around him actually changed. Please hear me. Many, many have gotten this wrong, the the, the wrong way around. See, what many do is they wait for the situation to change and then, then they find their strength. Then they find their joy. Then they find their peace. But that's not what David was doing here. He went to God. He strengthened himself in God. And then the situation changed was about to change. You see, David would write many psalms about this valued experience that he enjoyed as a lifestyle. In some of the psalms, he wrote of this place being like a secret place where he was hidden away from his enemies. He, he wrote it as a place of protection where God and him would feast together and all the enemy could do was watch. He, he called it a place where he finds it's, it's there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. He describes it as a place that his soul craves for, where he, all he wants to do is be in the presence of his God of his God, and David was someone that valued the presence, that protected the presence, that knew where to go when everything else seemed like it was falling apart. Look at this. Because of personal experience, David was able to access the place of strength quickly. See, what this story tells us is pretty obvious. That when in times of trouble, we have a place to go. But if that's truth, if David's David's example is inspiring us to live in that way, if this story is pointing to us a, a lesson to learn that we need not worry about what's going on around us, no matter how severe, no matter how 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 troubling it might look, in his presence is all we need to get through it. But if we believe that, why do we allow what is happening around us to steal our peace, to silence our joy and strangle our faith so easily? Why? Because we forget or even we are ruled by what we feel. Our emotions speak louder than our faith. Let me say this from David's example. Your history with God becomes your strength 
in God. Your history in God. You are building a history with God right now. Now, the only reason David was able to overcome a devastating attack was because he didn't forget this. In the moment of need, he quickly ran there. He didn't forget it. He didn't ignore it. He didn't shelve it somewhere. David was able to quickly position himself in a place of strength. So now that David was in God's presence, it said he already strengthened himself in God. But look at what happened in verse 8. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he, God, answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without, without fail recover all. Ha, ah, that's better. <laughs> David knew that God had spoken. And when God says something, it will not fail. Imagine the confidence that David had when he came out of that place, strengthened and with a word. The temporary circumstance all of a sudden took its proper perspective. Now, David could have been stuck in defeat. I'm sure many of his men were stuck in defeat. But that's not the end of the story. This is not your end of the story either. There is enough strength for the battle. There is enough strength to face what you're going to face and even what you are facing. But I need to say this to you, please hear me. You need to take responsibility to strengthen yourself in the Lord. I need to take responsibility. The responsibility of finding the strength in God is on you, is on me. It is your responsibility to enter the place of strength, to go to where you know God is. You are responsible, family. Listen, you are responsible to access this. You are responsible to apply this. I cannot do it for you. God will not force this upon you. You must take responsibility and apply what you know. Apply what you've been learning for all these years. Apply what you've been reading in the Word of God. Apply what you've been hearing. But the responsibility is on each one of us. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Create history with God in the midst of what is going on around you. Dwell in his presence every day. Don't miss the opportunities that he's giving you. And when you do that, the weights are lifted off your shoulders. The dark clouds dissipate and they vanish. Don't miss this glorious opportunity we have to find strength again. Mm. I'll tell you what, God has been wrecking me lately. And I am quite, not surprised maybe, I, I don't know, wouldn't know what to, word to use there, but in the midst of a challenging season, the richness of my love relationship with God and hearing His voice and being, being wrecked in His presence has gone to a whole new level. I tell you, this past week, we had the whole week of prayer. And for two straight days, I, I couldn't stop crying. I, my tears were ro welling up in my eyes constantly. I was so overwhelmed by God's presence, so overwhelmed by the significance of this moment that we're in. It gripped me. It gripped me so deeply. We all have a valuable and essential experience right now. Let me tell you this, God is up to something. God is up to something so spectacular that the church that's going to come out of this, and when I say church, I'm talking about you and I, not our buildings, the church, his people, are going to come out of this stronger, wiser, more ready than we ever have been. Like David we know where our supernatural strength comes from. We know where our peace, we know where our hope, our faith, our love, our belonging, we know where to go. And what God is doing in you, he will release upon you to those around you when this is all said and done. Mm. So, huh. to help you with all this, I know that's a lot to take in. 
But to help you with all this, Kaz and I started seeking God a couple of weeks ago about what we can do, how we can pastor you through this, though we are distant on, online and, and we can only meet via Zoom for most of us. But how can we pastor you well through this season? How can we equip you and give you some valuable tools to use so that you can get through this stronger and undamaged? Well, you ready? I've got some practical things I'm going to share with you now based on that message I just spoke about, David. But this is exciting. Everyone in the Living Room Church family, both in Melton and in Torquay, this week you will be receiving a gift from us. <laughs> we love gifts. I love gifts. Gifts are one of my love languages, that's for sure. But you're going to be receiving something in the mail that looks like this. We're calling it the Spiritual Survival Kit. Now, please be patient with delivery times. Because of these increased stage restrictions, um, we have to actually post these things out to you. And because of the influx of, of work that the Australia Post has, these things could be delayed. But please be patient. It'll come to you in the mail. But in this pack, you're going to find a card that looks like this. Now, in this card, we have four things that um, will help you in this season to find strength. Alrighty. Now, let me go through them one by one. The first one is this. In your pack, you will find pre-filled communion cups. This is by a great company called Hole in One, based in Sydney. And I've been using these communion cups for quite a while now. I just find it easy. I find I can, I can take it wherever I go. And subsequently, I, I use these cups every day. I have communion every morning with Jesus. And... What it is, the first layer, you peel back the first layer and you'll find your little cracker or your bread or whatever you want to call it, representing the body of Christ. And then you peel the second layer and there's your juice. I'm sorry, your juice, not your wine. It's actually juice. And so what we've done is we've included enough of these for to use on two occasions during our online church services. So two, two cups for each member of your family, and that should last us a month because we, we do communion online every couple of weeks. Okay, so that's exciting. The next thing you'll find in your pack are these. Armbands, wristbands. And on this wristband, you'll see our church's logo, our website address, and our motto, which we've used since day, day dot. It's about relationship, not religion. Now, we've included two sizes in your pack, an adult size and a youth size. There's really not much difference between the two sizes, maybe just a little, but we, we've tried to be sensitive to that as well. But the reason we've included these, and I've got mine on right now, and I've had it on for the past week or so, but what, what it is, it's, it's just a visual reminder that we belong to family. It's relationship with God and with each other, not a religious duty. So whenever you see it, whenever you feel it on your wrist, we encourage you to just lift up a prayer to, for your church family. Lift up a prayer for those that, are, that you're doing life with. And pray for us. Pray for me and my family. We always appreciate, we, and we need your prayers, I'm telling you. We need your prayers. Now, another thing we've included in your spiritual survival pack is a bottle of anointing oil. Now, our good friend Jordan DeWise in Queensland started a great business called Incredible Oils. And he has put together this special blend just for us. And I'm quite excited because in this blend of oil, there's actually frankincense, which we asked him to include. Now, this oil is gifted to you because we want you to, as you're pastoring your family and yourself in this, in this time, we want you to use this oil for what it's intended to be used for. In the Bible, the anointing oil is used for setting apart people for works of the Holy Spirit. And, and it's representing, the oil represents the presence and the power of Holy Spirit upon your life. So anoint your family members. Just pray the blessing of God over their lives. But oil is also used in Scripture as a, 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 a focus point of healing. So if you need healing in your body, in your mind, just put the oil on your forehead. Rub it in, smear it on. And that is to remind you that the presence of Holy Spirit is upon you to enforce what Jesus has done at the cross. Do, do, the, do the study yourself. It's a very, very good one. But parents, please, you are the spiritual leadership of your home right now. Use the anointing oil to bless them. All right. If you don't keep up with all this, it's okay. The card will explain everything as we go.
Then we've also included a fridge magnet, which I got printed. And that's a great thing to put on your fridge. <laughs> Go figure. But what this is, it's a daily declaration of what we're all about as a church family. You know how I am about declarations. I know the power of a declared word. I know the power of words spoken in faith that agree with the heart of God. And this one is awesome. It's, it's, the background image is um, a little child standing on a father's feet. I love that image. I've preached about it quite often. But let me read this, prayer, this declaration to you. Ready? It says this. Today. It says, today I choose to pursue intimacy with God above all else. Jesus is the vine and I am the branches. He is my source of life. I claim my inheritance as a child of God, of righteousness, peace, joy and hope. I lay at God's feet any weight that is not mine to carry and pick up his yoke that is easy and light. I am spirit filled. So I bless my spirit to lead my body, my mind, my will and my emotions. By my father's enduring faithfulness, I look to heaven to see what he is doing. I receive eyes to see, ears to hear and courageous faith to respond without hesitation. Today, I lean into God's whisper as I join him in what he is blessing. This is going to be a great day on my father's feet. Amen. Ah, oh, that's a great declaration. So put that on your fridge because if you're like me, you're visiting the fridge way too often than you should during this lockdown. While you're there, make a great declaration. Anyway, then we have this. It is a personalised card just for you and your family. What Kaz did as she was packing these, these um, kits for you is that she looked at each card and she asked, okay, God, who should this go to? And each card is different. None of you will get the same card, I don't think. But she asked, okay, God, who's this card for? And then as God led her to you, she placed it in your pack. How awesome is that? Now, what you'll find on there is um, a, a promise and a scripture. So... That's the pack that's coming to you guys, to your family this coming week or maybe possibly even the week after. Use it well. Enjoy it. And may it really bless your lives and ultimately draw you closer to God. The final thing I want to share with you, um, which will be going online this week, on our blog, on our church website, um, is this. And, and the link is on the screen. It's a PDF download of a daily journal that I personally use. I actually use an electronic format of that on my iPad. But you can download this. I'm blessing you with it. But there are some great things that just to go through as you read scripture with God, as you pray, just certain things. So feel free to download. It's free on the church blog page called Daily Encounter. So yeah, let me know how you go. I'd love to get a bit of feedback on how that's blessing you. But when it's all said and done, guys, I want to bring it to a close. By simply reminding you, you are not forgotten. You will always be with God and always covered in prayer by us. You will be stronger through this. You will get through this. This will not last. You know where your point of strength is. Remember David's example. Use this season of isolation and lockdown as an opportunity to make history with God. You will not regret it. We love you, we're praying for you, and we are really believing the best for your life. As I bring this time to conclusion, some of you watching, I'm really sensing Holy Spirit is drawing you closer. He's inviting you into a deeper relationship with him. Maybe for the first time, maybe again, but wherever you are with Jesus, can you please hear my heart? Don't turn him away. Don't go through this alone. You see, our relationship with Jesus is in every season applicable. If you have not received Jesus in your heart, please, in this moment, just say, God, I recognize my need. I recognize that I've been so far from you, Lord God, for all of my life, maybe years of my life. 
So today I feel led to accept you. I want to live how King David lived. I want to live with in your presence and know who you are and who I am because of you. I want to live in light of what Jesus has done on the cross to forgive me of my sins and set me free from the curse that sin has put upon me. I choose today to follow you, Jesus. And I receive you into my heart and make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for loving me and receiving me. Amen. Love you guys. Have an amazing day. As strength is yours, power, victory, and the promise is yours. God bless you. Amen. And I will be still.